Good morning, Internet, and welcome back to a tech tips video. And I'm going to apologize up front. I'm going to absolutely murder this person's name. A comment on a previous video about the sour gas boiler from Esco Luentola asked whether or not uh, it would be possible to automate the startup procedure. And I think I've got it sorted. So here we are with the two kilo sour gas boiler and the four kilo sour gas boiler. We'll do a quick overview of the automation that has happened. So physical design change. This airflow tile expanded from two to four. See the previous version is only two wide. And the reason for this to be four wide is so if there's any other gas up here, it can move down into this airflow space. Plumbing wise, it's all the same. Automation wise, we've added a hydro sensor. So if there is fluid here, you know, above five kilograms, it sends the green signal to turn off the liquid valve. There is a filter gate here. We'll set that to 10 seconds. So if this gas element sensor detects natural gas for 10 seconds, it will turn off the liquid valve. This pressure sensor, if it is above 20 kilograms of pressure, it goes into the same filter gate, the same automation wire into the knock gate, into the AND gate, turns off the liquid valve. This switch just turn, turns on one side of the AND gate so if the rest of the conditions are met, it turns on the liquid valve. This sensor says if the pressure in here is below, it should be below, oh no, wrong one. That's why it looked funny. Wrong sensor. I want to select that sensor. If this is below 500, turn on the liquid valve. Oh, I don't have that going in the right place, do I? Hold on. This one should just go directly into the valve. The reason for this is when this fills up with natural gas, once it gets down below 1,000, in this case 500, you actually want to turn on the system so it forces that low pressure natural gas down. It gets condensed. On the space heater side, we have a sensor up here that says if this room is in 550, turn on the space heaters. Same thing over here on the four kilo side. I added an AND gate, then we'll see which one works better. Same sensor below 500, but this one says if it's below 500 and this room isn't, and this room is above 550, then you can turn on the oil. If this room isn't above 550, we don't want to turn on the oil. So that's it. Let's see, I need to hook up the pipes. All right, here we'll go back into normal speed. Uh, oh, need to turn on the switches. Valve-wise, these are all set to 1,000. These are all set to 975. Same thing over here, 1,975. So we've got some fluid up there. Well, somehow we got some petroleum mixed in. Hold on. That will screw stuff up because I don't know where that little bit of petroleum came from. All right, and that didn't happen over here. Set these down. I went and warmed everything up. That's why all my settings were off. So I just kind of like warmed up all the super coolant, just tried to keep it all sorted. All right. Oh, no, you should be below five. Oops, I had that, I had that one wrong. No, I do want that to be above five because I want you to send a red signal. Yeah. Oh, because you, this is why you need the AND gate. And and that gets a knot. There. All right, 
So we ended up with a bit too much fluid up there. Let's clean that out. Because otherwise it would just be way too much. There. Now that's turned off. Perfect and going. These are now starting to cool down. Space heaters are on. For the four kilo side, you definitely need to control each valve individually because one side will start working before the other one will. All right, let's go into high speed mode. So this room started a bit hotter than that room. Perfect, I'll pause you once this gets closer to 400, we'll bring you back. I welcome back. I purposely set this room to 75 kilograms of water per tile, and this one's at 25. But this one started off colder and is bigger. So this one's taking a little bit longer to warm up, but it's also catching up faster. This one is just about there. We're at 450 already. So another 100 degrees, and this should flash. You're coming up on 250. Still got a ways to go on the super coolant. Needs to get down to negative 163 for anything to condense. Space heaters are working away. Oh, we should be getting close here. I'm going to switch out of high speed mode. Yep, see that one just flipped because we got our first batch of sour gas. And you were saying the room's not hot enough yet. So this side isn't turning on. Oh, and I also have this switch off. There we go. I'm like, that should be working. There, now we're getting some oil up. And now as the pressure comes up, this sensor should flip. Because we're not cold enough to condense the sour gas yet. So we'll go and put that back into high speed mode. See the pressure is coming up. This temperature is almost at the condensation point. We might just make it. All right, slow back down. That should be just about the point where this will condense. These heaters have turned off because the room is now hot enough. So this sensor is turned off. We are up to pressure. It's bouncing around a little bit. And then once that goes, once that was above pressure long enough, it then turned off the oil. And now we're starting to see some of that natural gas bounce around, which is what happens when it first starts up and flashes. I'm expecting a couple of big pops of it, so we'll see. We'll watch it. Yeah, so we got some oil got stuck there and you can see the valve turning on and off. Ooh, this one just flashed over to petroleum. So this is getting up to temperature. And see we got some natural gas up here plugging this up, which then turns off that hydro sensor because that petroleum can't get out of there. And our super coolant will keep bouncing back and forth until this all stabilizes. Until it gets down well below one, negative 163, you can still flash the methane straight to natural gas. So now we have enough natural gas that it is going to turn off this sensor. 
So because that is detecting natural gas, it won't let any more oil in until it doesn't see any natural gas. As you can see, there is quite a bit of pressure there. Some of this will try and flash and try and make it pass there. And yeah, that just kind of messes with the whole system. And I think we just got 520. We're almost there. Perfect. So now this sour gas is slowly condensing out. And then once all this sour gas is gone, this natural gas will start to condense. Here it goes. This one just flashed. So that's got a nice counterflow going, but we got to get that natural gas out of there. Once this sensor sees it below 500 grams, it will then turn the oil back on. So let's watch it happen. And so far I haven't done anything but just kind of click around. Zero interaction from me. So we should see that sensor turn green, that natural gas, or that Sour gas gets created, any little pockets of natural gas that's left, boom, gets eaten, and now the system is started. So yes, that is the automated width sensors. This one's set to 500. This one's probably better set to 10,000. I might make some notes for that. That's set to five. This is set to 550, and there you go. Now on this side, you'll see this right-hand side will condense first because it gets the sour gas, or it gets the super coolant first. So this one will probably pack in first, and then this one will take longer. But same idea, we've got a temperature sensor up here. It then feeds these two AND gates. The sensor controls the door for the steam room. And then we just have two copies of everything for the two liquid valves to control each side. I wonder if lowering the pressure made that work better. Looks like it. And this one looks like it's stabilized. Yeah, 10 kilos is too low because these things make enough. So set that to 15 kilos. Because we want it to keep counterflowing. We don't want it to turn off. We just want it to shut off if the pressure gets too high. So yeah, as long as it stabilizes below 15 kilos, we should be fine. And you see some of this gas bounces around, but any time it goes over the valve, over the liquid vent, it gets eaten. There it is. Yeah, it's still kind of bouncing. Let's go to 16. get out of this view and there we go that is the automated startup procedure thank you again to esco lunatola again i apologize if i'm pronouncing your name wrong i actually tried to look up a pronunciation and couldn't find any so thank you for the suggestion on how to make this automated if you guys have any questions or issues definitely let me know put something in the comments and we'll make it work Thank you very much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day.